Good morning, everybody. My name is Daryl Power, as you already know. Uh, I'm the owner of Reach Interactive. Uh, today, we're going to be covering is how to generate a steady flow of new business with sales funnels. Now, this presentation, there's really not too much fluff in it. Uh, we're going to be talking about the structure of a funnel uh, uh, and actually how to use a funnel in your business as another tool to grow it. So, you know, let's see. So about me, I got about 20 years in online marketing. Uh, 10 years of that was uh, before I actually joined an agency. So I, I think it started probably in about 1999, 2000. So pretty, pretty far back. Then I worked as a digital account executive at M5, uh, digital director at Upstream, uh, digital director and I co-founded uh, Robot Interactive. And then I uh, started my own company there about eight years ago called Reach Interactive. Okay, so what we'll cover during this uh, presentation are the current state of how businesses generate leads, uh, what is a sales funnel, the ingredients for a good sales funnel, uh, and the three parts, probably a uh, funnel strategy, the return path strategy, the traffic strategy, and then we'll show you how I put it all together. And then we'll uh, have some oh, about 10 minutes left for questions and bonus for joining today, I'll talk about. Okay, so it all begins here. Uh, how businesses are currently generating leads? And from what I've noticed, especially with small and medium-sized businesses, it's usually with hope and luck. Uh, many are still trying to use their website as a lead generation, which is really not that great. Uh, the truth is websites don't really convert that well and merely just serve as a digital brochure. Uh, many businesses are missing out on opportunities to grow their business. Uh, because of the lack of a proper sales funnel. Uh, and, and as I talk about uh, any other tool, like a website is a tool for uh, getting your name out there, uh, social media planning and, and, and promoting yourself uh, on social media is another tool. A sales funnel is also an additional tool that you can use in order to help grow your business, just not locally, but also nationally and internationally and on, on a global state scale. St uh, yeah. So the first part we're gonna talk about today is the sales funnel. So what is a sales funnel? Uh, basically, it's a framework that captures a customer, it nurtures the relationship with a customer, and ultimately, ultimately will convert that customer into revenue. And uh, I always get this question, uh, can a, they always, I'm always getting this question whenever uh, I deal, do these, uh, when I talk to clients, is it how can it benefit me or can it benefit me? And I have never seen a, I've never seen a sales funnel not work for any business, whether of any size. So if you if you if you think about a, a sales funnel, you can look at it as almost uh, meeting uh, meeting someone and then going to the point of where you want to get married to them. So it, it looks like you'd have your interest stage. And that's where you'd say hi. And that's where, where you'd say hi is probably through ads, All right? Ads get out there and then, uh, you, you, and, and that will be your, uh, how, you, how you connect and, and, and make that first initial engagement with somebody. Once they get used to you and they engage with you, they're gonna, they're gonna wanna hang out. And that's where you talk about making posts, uh, emails, stuff like that. Now, the acquisition part is where you go on a date, going out on a date, and that's equivalent to giving someone your email. The activation part is where it's basically kind of like introducing them to your family. Uh, once you get in, and at the activation part is the relationship starts to grow and it starts to become more defined. The retainment is basically getting in, uh, making, it, making it official, getting into an official rela uh, relationship. And the revenue portion is becoming married. So when developing a sales funnel, there are sequences and steps. You want to go from not know, from a customer who doesn't know you to a customer who trusts trust you and wants to buy from you. And, that's you. and that is what a sales funnel is in a nutshell. The sales funnel value ladder. Okay, the value ladder is basically this, uh, is part of a sales funnel. And for every step within a sales funnel, a person takes. They're also you're also want to get an increase in the uh, in in the amount of sales that uh, increase as well. 
uh, a sales funnel process will allow you to capture a customer or professional and build a relationship in a control channel to convert into active users. And uh, it's pretty simple. As a user travels through your sales funnel, they'll usually travel up the value ladder as well. So the goal of a sales funnel, and it's very simple, is to cover the cost of generating a lead while maximizing revenue over the lifetime of that lead to make a profit. So basically what it is, it's whenever you spend money in order to generate lead, you want, that, you, you want to be able to cover that cost as well throughout the, throughout the sequence of your funnel. Uh, a lot of ways we measure this, a lot of people will try and measure it through ROI or conversions or anything like that. I like to measure it as a customer lifetime value. Uh, and, and a customer lifetime value could be anywhere from three months, six months to 12 months. And this is where you, this is where you would generate your revenue on the back end. So the goal of a sales funnel continue is just an example of what, of what I mean. Let's say you, you have a maximum, gener maximum revenue you can generate over a lifetime of a particular funnel. Let's say it's about $3, $350 per lead. And let's say it costs about $3 to get that acquisition or that lead into your funnel. So if you, for every 100 leads, it's going to cost about $300. Uh, and let's say uh, of, the, of those 100 leads, 2% convert into sales in your funnel that's going to equal to about 700 in sales. So that's a profit of 400, but your lifetime value per customer for those 100 leads is going to be $4. So you're making a dollar for every $3. So you're covering the cost, you're breaking even, and that's what you want. Uh, is there any questions? Do people not understand this part right here? If not, just let me know and I'll, uh, I'll talk about it later. Okay, so let's get into the actual core of uh, this presentation, uh, the ingredients for a successful sales funnel. The funnel strategy. So what is a funnel? And basically the components of a funnel. You have four major components. You have a lead magnet, you have a tripwire, you have the core offer, you have the upsell, and you have the profit maximizer, upsell slash profit maximizer. So as you can see on the right-hand side, uh, this is a this is a sequence of what Tony Robinson uh, uses for uh, when he when he sells his products online. Uh, you have a, a list of stuff there. All of these lead magnets, they could be just uh, it's it's uh, that he has uh, he has free free speaking engagements, short five minute talks, stuff like that. Then he has a tripwire, which is a low low cost barrier to entry to get into his funnel. And then he has these core products and then these profit multipliers. Now I understand a lot of businesses are not really under, uh, a, a, a lot of local businesses are not using this sequence, but it can and will work for most small and medium sized businesses. So the lead magnet, let's talk about the lead magnet. So what is the lead magnet? This is one of the most important components of a funnel because it, it, it's, it gets people into it. It is used to capture those visitors into your funnel by offering something of value, the customer uh, offering something to the customer for free in exchange for their contact details at a minimum. Uh, just uh, and uh, just to go further, one, one step further, uh, subscribe subscribe to newsletter on your website is not a lead magnet. That's not what that's not what we're talking about here. Uh, the elements uh, of a winning lead magnet of uh, what you're going to look at is offering something ultra specific uh, solution. It promises, usually promises one big thing at a time, uh, speaks to a known desire and result and offers immediate gratification. You've probably seen stuff like that online. Uh, they, co they usually cover a pain point of some type and that uh, all your, uh, and you've probably gone through a phone not even knowing it. Uh, so it, it carry on. Uh, it moves prospects down a continuum of belief, has a high perceived value, and has a high actual value, and usually can be consumed within five minutes. So you, stuff like a PDF would uh, would be considered a lead magnet, or even a short uh, two or three minute video on something very specific. So some examples of lead magnets are free software or tool downloads, a free trial, a free sample of something, uh, a checklist, uh, 
especially for and now for what businesses local businesses would uh, focus on are probably coupons exclusive deals free shipping stuff like that uh, you can also use a quiz a quiz or assessment or a test in order to uh, to get people in, into your funnel as well so here are a couple examples of, of lead magnet landing pages uh, usually just like something like uh, $25 off or uh, just a, a free uh, uh, or a free giveaway book or something like that or a PDF uh, that uh, provides uh, specific information to that individual for, for somebody who wants that information at that point in time. So any questions on the lead magnet? I'm sure some of you have used, have used lead magnets or have seen them. Anyone here ever actually try using them? So the tripwire. This is also part, this is the second stage of uh, in the funnel strategy. Uh, what is a tripwire? Basically, it's an irresistible, super low ticket offer that converts prospects into buyers. Uh, the tripwire is basically a sales, uh, 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 it's a small sale, very insignificant, maybe $10, $15, $20. Uh, and basically, this is where you want to switch the customer psychological stage from being a free user into a buyer. And, it's, and at that time, with the tripwire, and that's, and that's the point of the tripwire, to move that psychological state of the, uh, of the person that just signed up through your, your lead magnet. Okay, some elements of a winning tripwire. Low barrier to entry. When I say low barrier to entry, I just talked about it there just then. It is the price point. Uh, easy to understand and explain. Uh, seamlessly leads to the core offer, a core offer, which I'll talk about later. Useful, but it's, it's useful, but it's incomplete and it doesn't cover everything. It, may, it, 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 it makes people want a little bit more. So some examples of tripwires are free plus shipping offers. Uh, these are great, especially if you do e-commerce. Uh, free plus shipping is uh, is a great it's a great uh, tripwire to get people to buy more on your e-commerce site. Uh, paid trial periods uh, usually these are with software services, uh, and uh, and they're usually pretty good. They're they're and you've seen lots of them. Uh, lots of places do that all the time. Uh, you have core product sample. So whatever your main product of your business is to sell, you can actually break out, make it a smaller portion and actually sell that as your tripwire. Uh, you can also sell samples, uh, perfume, coffees, stuff like that in order to uh, even, even wine clubs for smaller samples, uh, the, the people commit to the bigger, uh, bigger picture or bigger purchase, sorry. So an example of a tripwire here is, uh, is someone that's selling this beaded bracelet uh, is nineteen dollars, but they get it for free. Uh, uh, they're saying get this nineteen dollar beaded bracelet kit for free. All you have to do is pay for shipping. So that's a that's the tripwire. That's to get people to make their first purchase with you. So remember, uh, when you have a tripwire, is the tripwire is not about to make. It's not about making money. It's about breaking even and further pushing the individual uh, down your, uh, your funnel and to your core product of what you're selling. And that is where in your core product and in your profit maximizer, that is where you're going to want to, that's where you're going to make your profit. And that's where you're going to make, uh, make the, the cost of everything, uh, make the funnel basically churn itself. The tripwire, this is where you're not going to make a profit most of the time. Sometimes you will. But this is where you want to. Uh, this is where you want to get the person to make their first purchase with you, and at that time you push down the line in your funnel to your core product, and that's where you want. And, and then you 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 want to sell your core product and your profit maximizer or your upsell, whatever you want to call it, in order to cover the cost of your uh, cover your cost of the uh, of, of your acquisition in the first place of that lead. Carrying out with the funnel strategy, uh, there's three ways usually to sell your tripwire, and tripwire it, it, uh, is immediately after the contact signs up to your lead magnet. So you've you've seen stuff like 
you, you sign up to a, a lead magnet and you would go to a, a thank you page. In this case, you wouldn't have a thank you page. You would have a sales page with an offer there. Uh, you would say almost like, it, it's almost like saying, hey, I know, I, th thanks for signing up to the lead magnet. Uh, I really appreciate it. Uh, how would you also like to buy this? All right, and that would be your tripwire. Uh, you can also run it as its own landing page. If you don't want to sell someone as soon as they sign up to the lead magnet and you want to build, continue building a relationship uh, with them and just use, your, use email and all that, then you can promote the tripwire via email after two or three emails with them. The third way is through retargeting, which I'll talk about later on, which is part of the traffic strategy for a funnel. If someone lands on your tripwire landing page and if it has signed up for your lead magnet, then, your ad, then you set up ads that will follow them around the internet and promote your tripwire if they don't, if they don't purchase it. Uh, so those are the three ways that you can sell your tripwire. Okay, now let's get into the core offer. So what is a core offer? Uh, I suspect most of you already know what a core offer is. That's basically your bread and butter for your business. Uh, it is the main thing that, uh, uh, that makes you your money. Uh, but when someone takes your lead magnet and purchases your tripwire, then they're ready for your core offer. Uh, the core offer is the company's flagship, like I just said. This, uh, this is the offering they must know for, uh, they're most known for and most proud of. You should already have one in your business. And if you don't have one, uh, recommended that you start, you, you do have one. Not much, it's not much else I can talk about here other than that, uh, other than the things that you can test to improve sales with your core offer. Uh, things when you're like for a core offer, uh, when I recommend testing uh, is your price, price point. Uh, it may be too high, it may be too low, uh, stuff like that. Uh, we've, I've tested stuff like uh, single pay and multi pay. It's, sometimes it's great, like if your price point is too high, maybe giving uh, multiple payments for something. Uh, will will help uh, will help increase the conversion rate on your core offers. Uh, if you think about you giving trials away, uh, you, you having a trial or no trial. Uh, headlines headlines are a big one. I've seen a lot of corporate headlines uh, being used for uh, core offers. Maybe if they sometimes if you switch it up to make it more a uh, uh, personal, uh, less corporate feel. Uh, I've seen uh, I've seen conversion rates easily in three times triple uh, or triple based on uh, just on changing headlines. Uh, and then you also have uh, one step versus multi-step order forms. This is a great way to, uh, this is a great thing to test whenever uh, selling your core offer. Uh, multi-step is usually preferable, especially if the, uh, if the person drops uh, after the first half, because usually the, when you have a multi-step order, it's split in half. Usually you have the name and your email and then you click submit and then you put in your uh, it, put in your credit card information on the next step. And usually what will happen if they do not, if they skip the, uh, the credit card information, at least now you have their information in your system because they put it in the multi-step form and then you can carry on and, and follow up uh, with trying to get that person back into the funnel and buy your core product again. Uh, other things you can test for, uh, for your core product uh, is uh, this, text versus a video sales letter, or even having a hybrid sales page, which is basically a combination of having a video and text content on it in order to sell your product. So some of those things are, 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 gonna, is gonna, uh, are so those are some of the things you should look at when trying to uh, sell your core offer within your funnel. Okay, let's talk about the, uh, the profit, profit maximizer. So what is it? Every, every offer needs something on the back end to increase immediate average customer value and overall engagement with the buyer. And that is what the profit maximizer does. Uh, profit maximizer will usually, could be a combination of different things. Usually you'll have an upsell and this is basically offering something more of the same, uh, either at the same price or at a 50% discount in order to get that person to buy it. It depends on what, and it depends a lot on your product if, if a profit maximizer suits you, suits your business. Another way is a cross sell. Uh, and this is basically offer, offering related products or services to, uh, to your core product. 
And to me, the holy grail for any uh, profit maximizer will be a subscription. This is a great way in order to uh, get more, P in order to basically have a long-term uh, long term connection or a long-term uh, relationship with a customer and, and, and actually make uh, a good, uh, make a good bit of profit off that uh, at the end. So what I covered there was the funnel strategy. And now what we're going to get into is called the return path strategy. And this works in part with the funnel strategy as the funnel strategy is basically your core sequence and the return path strategy is what you're going to get for people who drop off and don't go through your entire funnel in order to get them back into the funnel and get them uh, purchasing items from you again. So what, uh, so, so thanks to the lead magnet offer, we now have the ability to go back to non buyers and put them into a follow up series to increase initial conversions. Equally important, we also have the ability to go back to uh, uh, other buyers to back to our buyers who didn't purchase everything in the sales funnel. Examples like the tripwire, the core offer, or the proxima, uh, profit maximizer. Uh, so what does a return path strategy look like? It usually had, for me, this is what I, I usually do. You have automated follow-ups, you have retargeting, you have custom audience marketing, you have lookalike audiences. Other options include uh, a constant strategic communication, such as like social media or email that you that you run with your current uh, current officer, uh, with your current email list, and exit offers on your pages as well. So automatic follow-ups, and this is where this is this is very important. Uh, this is where you have you set up sequences for emails within your overall uh, uh, in your overall funnel, and and they would they would actually turn off or on depending on where that person is in your funnel. Uh, we typically only send three to five emails uh, for a tripwire follow-up because given the low barrier of entry, if they don't buy within the first few days, your best bet is to move on and offer your subscriber a different tripwire. Alternatively, you could also run a campaign to re-engage your subscribers and give them a new reason to buy. So this is what this is what I like about email. Once you have them in email, uh, if only it, it, once you're, once you're in your uh, email sequences or yeah, or your auto or your autoresponder, uh, you can actually re-engage them with different offers and put them through a different funnel in order to see where they're at. Uh, we also have retargeting, which is the second part. What I usually like to do is to create a thirty-second to two-minute video ad for each stage of the funnel. We want to retarget those who didn't click on the ad but watched at least 50% of the video. This further segments our target audience. We then send a different follow-up video image ad saying, I, I see you didn't get my offer. Uh, and then you offer it a second time or a third time, even at, even at a reduced price. Uh, usually stuff like this, when I'm retargeting, I, used to, uh, I run campaigns to different parts of the funnels for at least three to seven days. So custom, and another part of it now is a custom audience marketing. This is where a business, where a business can import user information into the ad platform for retargeting. You should create now audiences, uh, you should create an audience for existing, for the existing data that you have, i.e. your pixel or your email list so that you can target people are, who are already familiar with your business. You should also go and make a number of these audiences so you have them on hand whenever you need them in the future. Here's a couple examples. You can have timeframes for your audiences. So people who've last visited in the last 30 days. Uh, you can also talk about, you can also have a, a seven day sales page visit. So anybody who's purchased from you in the last seven days, you can retarget them with an ad. Uh, and you could be upselling them to something. Uh, you can also have purchasers, pe people, who, uh, people who've purchased from you in the last 30 days. Uh, you can follow them up and have, have a thank you message if you wanted to in order for and to further uh, build relationships with that individual. Uh, you can have checkout abandonments. So people who've halfway through, halfway through purchasing just said, no, I don't want to buy this. Uh, I'm just going to drop out. So those pers that person now drops out, but now they go into uh, a retargeting list where you try and get that person back on, back into the funnel, back into buying again. You can also focus on uh, 
people who have watched videos that you've posted up as well. So you can retarget people who've watched 50, 75, 90% of your video. Usually the higher the, the higher the watch time on the video, the more engaged that individual is and the, and, and the better it is to target and try and reach out to that person to try and sell or even uh, collect their email with. So lookalike audiences uh, are not really in the return path strategy, but they're also not in the traffic strategy as well. But I kept them here because they're, they're similar custom audiences but slightly different. Uh, basically what happens here is you take your data, such as your email list that you've had uh, of people that purchased from you before, you put it into a, a, uh, the face, uh, into an alg into Facebook or AdWords algorithm, and they'll actually spit out a database of similar looking profiles who've never purchased from you, but are similar to that email list or that pixel data and that basically gives you a whole brand new pot of people that you can advertise to who are highly similar and highly likely to buy from you. All right, the traffic strategy. Is, this is the point you wanna try and get people into your funnel. Now that you got a funnel in place and your return plan in place, we now want to get people seeing your offer. So we use, uh, I use a combination of AdWords, YouTube ads, and Facebook ads. Other ways you can, uh, you can also drive traffic is, uh, to, uh, is using, is optimize your Google placement, uh, your Google My Business listing, uh, search engine optimization, a newsfeed content plan, or a social media plan uh, in order to uh, drive traffic. But mainly what we're gonna talk about today are the top three, AdWords, YouTube, and Facebook. For AdWords, uh, when it comes to small and medium-sized business, I always recommend uh, starting off with a paid search. Uh, it's a great way. It, it, all search traffic has a high intent of interest, need, and want, and of something at that very moment. So you want so uh, when people are looking for your uh, looking for a particular product or service or anything like that, AdWords is a great place and it's a great way in order to start building that audience, that pixel audience and being able to retarget those people later on down the road. Now our traffic strategy, this is uh, YouTube and Facebook ads, uh, the YouTube and Facebook ads uh, funnel strategy. Now there are a number of similarities between YouTube and Facebook. This allows us to use, this allows us to use similar tactics, one being the video funnel strategy. Ultimately, we created Ultimately, we are creating a pre-sales funnel with video. Before they even, before they even enter your, your actual funnel, we're basically, we're pre-qualifying these people through Facebook through, uh, and, and through YouTube with video. This is an additional layer to your funnel, and this will allow you to attract new targeted customers into your world at a cheaper cost. Uh, what well, basically and how it works is you create multiple engaged video ads using multiple pain points and hooks to gain to, to get uh, to give value uh, to customers. And once we have that, we retarget the retarget them with more specific video ads based on their engagement. Through their engagement beha behavior, you should uh, you show them a different ad to build uh, to build trust and relationship and to bring them closer to committing to buying or signing up for your offer. And basically, this is how I set it up. This is how I do it. Uh, and it's usually a three-tier video funnel. So first, the first videos they'll usually see, uh, and in the video I would have, we would talk about pain points, about uh, what the problems that the individual may have. We would educate them on how we can help them. And then we can talk about, and then we'd have a soft call to action. And if they watched at least 50% of that video ad uh, or engaged in that video ad, then they would move on to the, then the second video ad would show up probably within a day or two, uh, talking about solutions, what other people are talking, how, how it helped other people through with testimonials, and then we'd have another soft call to action. And if at that point in time, if they watched both videos with 50% engagement, 50% were engaged with those level one and level two uh, videos, we would uh, we'd actually send them the, the final video, which will be promoting the product 
and having the call to action. So let's put it all together. So what does it look like? Can everybody see this? Yep. Yeah. Okay. So this is why basically everything I just talked about just then, this is it right here. Uh, over in this portion right here, as you can see, you'll see AdWords search campaigns and main website. Now this does not have to be part of your funnel. I only put it in here because I know most, uh, most of you probably only have a website. And I'll try and I try to incorporate that into your funnel. Uh, the second half here, everything from here, from the, the pre-sale funnel video ads, Facebook and YouTube, all the way over is the actual funnel itself. So basically what we, when we talked about pre-sale funnel videos, this is the traffic we've already talked about. We've talked about the pixel campaign. So basically you would drive the traffic using your pre-sale funnel video ads to your lead magnet. And your lead magnet could be anything. It could be a discount offer. It could be a coupon. It could be like, say, for a realtor, top five ways to, uh, for top five things you should look for when buying a home. Or an insurance salesman, top three things you should uh, look out for when buying insurance. Stuff like that. Uh, and they would sign up there, and it'd be just a nice, quick piece of information that they get, and you get an email, and then they go to your your your, your tripwire, your sales page. Here is where you would gauge again. You have, you have, you've already collected the email with the individual uh, of that individual and you try and, uh, you try and sell something to that individual. Uh, it just needs to be a small, it could be a piece of information, a more valuable piece of information, 10, 15, $20. Uh, if they don't buy it, then they'd go into your, uh, your, your, uh, your retargeting sequence. Same thing with your re-engagement email sequence, because now you already have their email. If they do purchase and they carry on, then they move into your core offer. And again, if they don't purchase your core offer, you can have a re-engagement email sequence in order to push them back, in order to, in order to build that relationship and keep, uh, and keep reaffirming, uh, uh, trying to get that person to purchase uh, that offer. And then you also, have a, you also have an email audience campaign, which you can also retarget, continue retargeting the people who purchased your tripwire from. And the same thing goes to your upsell and so on and so forth. And then I also talked about lookalike audiences. Now, once you get to the upsell, you can take everybody who's ever purchased from your lead magnet all the way up to your upsell into your email list. And then you can create a lookalike audience by putting that information into either Google, Google AdWords or, or yeah, into Google uh, or into uh, Facebook. And they'll spit out a, uh, a whole bunch of new people who look similar to the people that already purchased from you and, are, and, and then you can advertise to them. That would actually, uh, and that would, uh, usually what happens with an audience like that, you have a higher rate of conversion rates from your lead magnet to your upsell at that point in time. So any questions on this, like you can open up, I can open up the, if, if anybody has any questions about anything right now, like if you want to ask me about this, Anything particular to your business? Anything of uh, anybody confused on this, or or is it anything like that? Now, this is something you can do on do yourself. There are there are plenty of platforms out there in order to create. Uh, the, uh, the, pro uh, the, the sales funnels that you're looking for or that you want. And it doesn't need to be, the, it doesn't need to be this detailed and it needs to be this complex. Uh, even just creating a, even if you, today, if you started creating a lead magnet for yourself, uh, in order to push the, in order to start getting leads for your business, you can create the tripwire later on, uh, in order to, and you can re-engage those people through email afterwards in order to push them through into your core offer. Okay, uh, any questions? Anything? 
Uh, if anybody has any questions, you can either unmute yourself and ask, or you could use the chat feature. Uh, we have a question. Will every stage of the funnel apply to all businesses? Uh, it depends on what you're selling. Uh, I usually just, uh, let's go back to it right here. Uh, Uh, usually, if you're going to do anything, you want you want at least a minimum of a lead magnet in order to begin your sales funnel. Uh, but I would recommend you can pretty much apply this to any type of business. I have not seen it, I have not seen it not work for any other. Uh, I've never ever seen it not work. Because the goal, at the end of the day, the goal of the sales funnel is to uh, generate generate your leads and to generate sales. Will every stage of the funnel apply to all businesses? I would think some services would be more. I, I would think some services would be more difficult to use them all. That's a follow on question. Okay, well, I think some. Okay, uh, some services would be more difficult to use them all. Uh, mm -hmm. Disco, I, I've had, it's hard to say. Like for a lead magnet, just like give me an example. Let's say, uh, let's, let's talk about, uh, let's say a hair salon, for example, a lead magnet, and you can target women. Uh, the lead magnet could be, uh, could be talking about, uh, it could be top five hair, hairstyles for 2020 or 2021 or something like that. Uh, and then someone could sign up for it. And in the tripwire, the tripwire could be uh, you can you can say uh, you could have uh, a discount on uh, on get one of the hairstyles and we'll give you twenty five percent off or something like that, right? And the core offer could be uh, once once they get into the the core offer for a hair salon could be uh, uh, doing nails, eyebrows, uh, doing a full cut. Uh, uh, a die, stuff like that. So that, that's an example of what you could do at the local level for a uh, for a uh, for a funnel. Another question, and and this is sort of related to your last question: Would there be any differences for businesses who offer services as opposed to products? No, uh, not no, not really. There's really no. There, you you can use both. Both can use it, both services and, uh, and I don't, there's really no difference. Like if you're selling a service, your core offer is your service. So you're gonna want to try and get people into your service. So you can break a piece off of what you sell as a whole and put it into your tripwire, right? And your lead magnet could be, uh, it, there, there's really no way, that I've never seen this not work for any business. Uh, like uh, anything, either B2B or B2C, it, it works pretty good. Like if you're into, if you're doing a lot of e-commerce, this this works great with e-commerce as well. If you're trying to sell stuff, out, uh, sell stuff beyond Newfoundland uh, on the global market, this works great. I'm just going to get into basically what I'm going to offer now for the bonus today uh, is everyone is going to get access to uh, the Clicks University. Uh, the Clicks University is, is a new program that we've launched here at the Reach Interactive, and basically. It is free courses, every type of marketing course you can ever think of, we're gonna be adding into it. There's none in there right now. Uh, every course that we do add is gonna be a paid course. Uh, we're gonna be talking tra training courses, uh, short short, cor short, 15 minute courses that you can take and, and learn something uh, in, in order to help market your business. Uh, we're also gonna have uh, case studies put in there. We're gonna be putting a lot of case studies in there over the next year or so. That you can use in order to help your business grow. We do thank Daryl today for taking the time to um, to participate and facilitate this this webinar for us. This webinar is a part of a Main Street project that we recently launched. Uh, it's uh, if you want to swing by the website, it's um, MainStreetRecovery.ca, and there's lots of tools there uh, for you to take advantage of. And Daryl was uh, was a part of this Main Street Recovery project. So as uh, on behalf of the St. John's Board of Trade, um, I really like to thank you guys for participating today.